names that is going to be unknown. I think a lot of players are aware of Sammy, that the accomplishments are so good. It's like Jason Kaczynski, a player that isn't really around very much anymore, yeah. but, but a player that everybody knows. Let's uh, let's uh, take us back out of the past and into the present now. We have our next feature match uh, live here for you guys. Do we see there? It's going to be, I believe, uh, Benjamin Pham on the left. And who is it on the right again? Uh, we have got Rune Hermans. Oh, OK. So Rune, another one of these players who like, aged up from the seniors division after having done very, very well. So two very, very accomplished players here on the desk today. Yeah, we see Benji there with a top 16 at EUIC, Anaheim Special Event Champion, a top eight at Malmo Regional, and an Oceania International's top 16. And whenever anybody's got things like international, you know, these top finishes on their accomplishments, it shows they are a very good player. But you said, you know, Rune, aged up from seniors, a very accomplished player in their own right. Yeah, just, just as recently as Liverpool, was able to get a top 16, also a top 32 in Gdansk, and a top 64 in Liverpool. So if you go by that logic, right, you go up one step, is there going to be a top eight this time. I mean, it's the only logical explanation. <laughs> but you'll notice those are accomplishments in Masters. Yes, absolutely. You know, that's taking away all of these ridiculous senior accomplishments. Now, we do see the prizes coming down. Two routes prize from Rune there is not ideal by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and I'm just double checking there is a Mirage Step Curlier. That's going to become very important now in this matchup. It is. So here we are, kicking off here round four. It looks like Rune will be going first. Starting off with that Fog Crystal. Of course, a staple card in the guard rod just lets you grab either a basic Psychic Energy or a basic Psychic Pokemon. So you can use that to grab your Rolts to set up. You can use it to grab a you know, Zacian V in the late game if you want to set up an attacker. Just, uh, yeah, phenomenal card. It's a great card, and this is where Rune gets the bad news. This is where Rune has a look through and goes, oh, wait, I've got two routes prize. Yeah. And it's one of those matchups where, you know, as soon as I see that, I'm having a look at Rune's deck list and I'm going, is there a Mirage Step Curlier? Yeah. Because if there is, it's not that bad. You basically ignore your routes, use Mirage Step Curlier to just get all your Curlier onto the bench, and then you can set up and get those Gardevoir while kind of ignoring your routes. If there isn't a Mirage Step Curlier, then you're literally just limited to two Gardevoir and still you start taking prizes, and then it becomes a lot dodgier. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons why the Mirage Step, step, the Mirage step Curlier is so valuable as a as a sort of tech option in the deck, because we saw, like, for a while, a lot of Gardevoir players were thinking, you know what, no, I just would rather have the four refinement Curliers, I want to draw as many cards as I can. But in a situation like this where your pricing is awkward, if you can, you know, not price the Mirage Step uh, Curlier, it means that you have a way to get into the game and set up your board fully even with uh, limited access to Rolters. And let's not Rolter, forget, rather. there is an excellent chance that Rune loses a Routs when Benji has his Absolutely, turn. Absolutely, yes. Benjamin here is going to be going for that turn one Cramorant, that Spit Innocently for 110 if you've got four cards in the Lost Zone. It's two Flower Selectum, a Comfey, and a Chorus' Experiment. It's not that no. difficult to pull off. And if you go down to one route after your opponent's had one turn, that is not where you want to be. Speaking of which, it's time for Benjamin to have that one turn and start off with a Nest Ball. Yeah, and a good start there for Benji. So we'll be looking through to see what's prized and what isn't. And yeah, absolutely. Like This is almost like the one the signature plays for Lost Zone engine decks, right? You just get that cram right down early. It just gets your early attack in. And especially if you're going second, you can get it in turn one. And that is just like a great amount of aggression that you can put and a lot of pressure attacking going on a, on a single prize attacker. Especially when you're talking about something like Giratina, where you need to evolve up. You need to get seven cards in the Lost Zone to activate Mirage Gate, which is your item card that accelerates energy. Then you need to draw into your Mirage it takes a few turns to get Giratina V-Star going. So having something like Cramorant, which can put in some of that work in those first couple of turns before the Giratina really gets going, that is, it's such a huge thing. I'm convinced Cramorant is one of the most ridiculous cards in the game right now. That's, uh, that's very, very strong words, but honestly, you have a very fair argument for them. So after the NS ball, getting down another Comfey, having another look through to see what's surprising and what isn't. Of course, in the early stages, you really want to you know, get down your Comfey so you can set up well, but you, it's very important, of course, to get down those Giratina Vs so you can evolve them up into the Giratina V-Stars, and that's when this deck is putting out its real power. And we see the Battle VIP pass coming down and eyeing up, as you predicted, a Giratina, and as I predicted, a Cramorant. Not exactly the hardest thing to predict no, ever. I, I wouldn't say so either. <laughs> We're going to be looking for a Radiant Greninja. But it seems like that the general rule here is if you think you can get the Cramorant easily, you go for the Cramorant. If you think you're missing a part or two for the Cramorant, then you go for the Radiant Greninja. So this probably tells us Benjamin's feeling pretty good about that turn one attack. Yeah, so here we go. Flower selecting number one. What does uh, Benjamin find? Oh, that's another Battle VIP oh. pass, but there's a Chorus Experiment as well. Oh, my goodness. You want both of those <laughs> cards. And that's the thing, right? If you're Rune and you see your opponent on turn one getting a Battle VIP pass in the loss zone, you know they got a good card. 
card. But this already puts Benjamin at three cards in the loss zone yeah. straight away. Yeah, and it's too important, right? Because like we just mentioned, if you can get a turn one Cramorant attack, that puts you in such a good position. And so you just can't deny that call rest, especially if you don't have one in hand already. And Benjamin's been around for a long time. Benjamin, in looking at Rune's board, basically knows if I KO the routes, that gives Rune exactly one turn if they play it to Mirage Step Curlier. And if they don't get that, I've won this game. Yeah, and there we see the, the crucial find from Benjamin as he did have the jet energy ready to go. So this is really the card that uh, I think skyrocketed uh, Giratina's the playability and popularity. Just the ability to, when it's uh, you know, when you attach it to a bench Pokemon, it just whizzes into the, into the active, and then you can use that energy to retreat the comfort and go into something else. It's such great synergy. It is. We actually saw the Raiding Greninja might have been in hand all along, it turns out. Oh, Gets okay. kicked to the bench, conceals some cards, draws some cards. So we've got Benjamin here. There's four cards in the Lost Zone. We've got an energy you can just use to retreat. Here comes the Cramorant, and it is a very easy turn one KO. And look, I told you that was probably going to happen, and it wasn't some ridiculous clairvoyant thing. This is what Lost Zone decks do <laughs> on turn one going second. Yeah, absolutely. And a very nice, easy uh, Lost Zone there from Benjamin of the last, last letting to get rid, getting rid of that Spirit Tomb. Not really going to be that relevant in this matchup. So very happy to just see that gone. Yeah, you're not going to need it. And that's always good. It's like hitting Battle VIP Pass after turn one. It's yeah. a very easy decision. Now, the goodness rune is you've got an energy, you've got a level ball. There's no surprises what's getting searched out. It is going to be that Mirage Step Curlia, which will then allow Rune to go and search for free more Curlia. It's also going to give Benjamin a really easy prize because Benjamin needs to do exactly nothing <laughs> to get a KO on that Curlia and go up by two prizes. Yeah, the Cramorant is there, ready to go. You can just announced Spit innocently again, and you are smooth sailing. Now, very interestingly, Rune, we saw that during the deck search, Rune's actually doing a quick count of all the supporters in this deck. Now, this is going to be very crucial because Rune knows that a big part of the strategy against Giratina is going to be timing those Ionas well to stop Benjamin from being able to do a counter play. We saw he was counting the Ionas, counting the Presser's research, so this is one of those things that you have to be very aware of when you're playing, not just Gardevoir, but any deck, really. It's not just about, you know, counting what's the prize in terms of do I have access to this or not. It's like how many of each of these copies do I have access to? Yeah. Uh, very important. Now we do see a second energy coming down there on the Curlia. All this really does is put an en extra energy in the discard to be accelerated with Gardevoir. It doesn't actually do anything for Curlia here, but it can actually just be a fun... He knows it's getting KO'd, right? Yeah. So it's just a way to get extra energy in the discard. Yeah. Now, it is interesting here that Rune opted to play the Iono. There was a small risk that Rune could have redrawn... Well, not redrawn, but could have drawn the more of the Curliers that he wants to get down with Mirage Step, and that would have been a little bit rough if that was the case, but it looks like, fortunately for Rune, no Curliers drawn, so he'll be able to use Mirage Step to get all of these out. Yeah, and that's the thing. Mirage Step gets from the deck. It is very specifically from the deck, and there's no routes down on the bench, so you can't evolve into Curlier. Had Rune drawn any, that would have been terrible, but doesn't. Gets free Mirage Step Curlier, and actually, as a fun little side note, does have that Jirachi on the bench here, which is going to protect against Sableye shenanigans, dropping damage counters with that Stella Veil ability. So, a rough start for Rune with prizes and all of that, and Benji having a good start. But honestly, this is the best turn two you could have hoped for. Yeah, uh, Rune's going to be pretty happy with that. And you, you mentioned Jirachi. I think it's important to draw attention to this. I mean, this card has been out for a little bit now. Of course, it came out in Obsidian Forces, uh, but it does have that ability that, yeah, prevents your opponent's basics Pokemon attacks from placing damage counters on your bench Pokemon. This is a card that single-handedly made the Lost Box matchup so much more manageable for Gardevoir. Absolutely. I'm going to have to correct you to say Obsidian Flames. So, what do I, what do I say? Instead of City and Forces. There's lots of that. <laughs> it's easily yeah, it done. Is. We've <laughs> all been there. Uh, you're absolutely right. I do apologize. Anyway, there, Nest Ball grabbing a second Giratina V. Very important, of course. You want to be able to follow up with another Lost Impact in case your first Giratina V star goes down. But other than that, there's not a huge amount here. Going to be a concealed cards from Benjamin. Scarding a Psychic Energy. See if you can find some more. Was that a Battle VIP pass and a Boss's Orders? Not really what you want here, I think. Chorus's experiment is really the ideal here. Like, yeah. Benjamin started this turn with the KO on the board. What you really want to do in a turn like this, get the second Giratina V. Maybe a V-Star, maybe you don't. It doesn't have to be this turn. But certainly build up your Lost Zone. So Mirage Gate is going to work, but a Poker Gear gets that Chorus's experiment. That's going to put Benjamin into six cards in the Lost Zone. A single Flower Selecting will put Mirage Gate on board. Yeah, this is exactly why. We've seen so many of uh, the Giratina V-Star lists recently opting for Poker Gear, and it's exactly for situations like this. Chorus's experiment is so crucial to find both like frequently and early, and Poker Gear just gives you a few more outs to do, find the Chorus's experiment in those early 
early turns. Turn one and two are absolutely huge. If you can get it turn one and two going second, that means free flower selecting in the space of two turns and Mirage Gate is on the board. Now, we know there's a magic number of 10 for Sableye and for Giratina V-Star's Star Requiem, but seven is the real, you know, it's four for the Cramorant and then seven for Mirage Gate to start powering up that Giratina. So getting Chorus's experiment first two turns, absolutely huge here. Let's make no mistake, were it not for Mirage Gate, like Lost Zone Toolbox decks as a concept probably just wouldn't exist. Nah. At least no, nowhere near in the form they do now. Like the Mirage Gate is the card that makes these archetypes work. And we saw a second Jets Energy. You pointed out Freya beautifully last turn, how good this is. It gets the Comfy in the active. You flower select. Oh, you've actually got an energy ready to retreat it straight away. Back into the Cramorant. Jobs are good. Un. Oh, hold on a second. Rune did not get down a Manaphy this turn. Benjamin actually has an opening here to do Mirage Gate, maybe charge up that Radiant Greninja and knock out two Curlias at once. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, that would be kind of fun. And that you saw your opponent only play two routes turn one. And you saw them have to rely on Mirage Step. Now, doesn't actually go for the Greninja. Has gone for Mirage oh. Gate onto the Giratina to start with. Oh, I think I know why. I think so that flower selecting that Benjamin just did, uh, actually had a choice between a, a Psychic and a Water Energy. So I think one of the Water Energies is in hand, so you can't attach it. So like, I think the play is no longer open. Unfortunately not. There's free water energy in the deck, but was not able to piece that together. That would have been great, taking out two refinement curlier, putting Rune on the back burner. Yeah, there you go. So there's one in the hand, and then there's one prize as well, must be. <laughs> that is less than ideal, but it's not the end of the world at all. We see the retreat with the jet energy. Cramorant comes active. It's going to get the KO onto that curlier, and Rune is going to need a big turn to just keep up here. God, what doesn't mind going down a prize or two, but you need to reverse it at some point. Yeah, you do. So, uh, Ben was debating whether to put down the path to the peak or not. Does decide to in the end. You know, it, it can you know, hold the Gardevoir player back a little bit. Usually you're going to want to save it for the earlier turns when their hands are, it isn't as big, so you, they, they're less likely to have a counter stadium. But if Rune can't find a path to the peak now, or a path to the counter now, then obviously no Psychic Embrace, and that means you can't really make a good counter play. Yeah, you do need Gardevoir GX, to, uh, Gardevoir EX, I should say, to be accelerating energy. There's no energy on the board right now, so Gardevoir EX just to start accelerating and building up an attacker is going to be big. Good news is with free refinement, that's an extra six cards we're going to be seeing drawn straight away here. Yeah, and this, and this is basically the backbone of the Guard of Our strategy, right? The fact that you have both the, the, the stage one that is extremely useful and just gives you that extra consistency to set up to get yourself to the point where you set up your stage twos and then you can just take over the game from there. And Rune actually used it with a, discarding a, psych, a psychic energy, drew two cards, one of which was a psychic energy. So can, there's four energy in the discard, can get a fifth in there very easily if he wants to. Doesn't have to, depends on exactly the play he's wishing to make and which supporters, which attacker he's going with. We do just see a Professor Turo hit the discard there. Yeah, that was the, the last refinement. Interesting they chose to discard that. I mean, there were other cards that could have been discarded instead, but maybe thinking I don't really need Turo right now, best just get rid of it. Oh, and there is the out to the path in the form of the Lost Vacuum. That'll work quite nicely. Cresselia comes down here. Cresselia always good for taking out stuff like those Comfey on the bench, getting some cheeky prizes. And look, getting some cheeky prizes while you start building up your board, not a bad thing. No. So it looks like we've got an Iono coming down here. Oh, that's uh, pretty, pretty good. Uh, Benjamin, of course, having already taken two prizes, going to have to shuffle the hand and put it at the bottom and only going to draw four here. Definitely not you wanna, what you want to be seeing at this point, whereas Rune is still going to get the full complement of six in the hand afterwards. And with that Guard Warrior X set up, is looking pretty good to try and start to make that guard of our comeback did get a giratina v star and a boss's orders so oh. no no third energy for the giratina yet but not a bad hand by any stretch so here comes a Cresselia, and we've seen this play a million times before you use guard of War to put one energy onto each of your psychic pokemon but that also puts the damage on each of your psychic pokemon and then Cresselia can move two damage counters from each of your pokemon to one of your opponent's pokemon and here it's going to be nice and simply you move the eight damage counters over to a Comfey, and that's going to give you a prize. Could use it to soften up a Giratina if you prefer, but a lot of the time, this is just keep up with the prize race, take out a Comfey. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the time, with the Giratina V-Star, you can attach an FNG with Psychic Embrace to cure it regardless, so, yeah, it makes, probably makes more sense just to take out a Comfey here, C cut off a extra consistency option for Benji. Oh, actually, no, okay. Does so, use it to soften up the Giratina. That same. is absolutely something we see. It is a valid play. It basically puts Giratina V-Star down to 200 HP, which makes 
makes it much easier to KO without having to really overextend and do those giant plays with lots of energy accelerated by Gardevoir and lots of damage. But here is the boss's orders onto a refinement curlier. And oh, look, that Crammer is still there. Yeah, just like don't need to do anything, doesn't need to do anything else. It's just going to spit innocently over and over uh, until, like, I guess Benjamin KOs every single Pokemon in Rune's deck or the Cramorant gets KO'd. Oh, uh, but there's another path to the peak. Yeah, that was drawn off of the Iron O as well. Like I say, Benjamin really didn't need much. And in the previous round, we saw Morpeko just taking all the prizes. And now we've got Cramorant, which is really not much bigger than a Morpeko, taking all the prizes. Where are all the big Pokemon gone, Freya? It's just the little guys that are coming around doing all the work here. Just don't need them. Like, <laughs> evidently, right? You just don't need them. I mean, look, I feel vindicated here because I was bigging up Cramer at the second this game started. And Benjamin's just been taking all the prizes with the Cramer. But we're starting to see the effect of not having access to all of those routes. Because in a game like this, even where you Mirage Step, being able to bench those routes to start recovering those Curlier and Gardevoir is huge. And Rune is not able to do that. So we've got... One Gardevoir, one Gardevoir EX, no Curlia. We do have a replacement for Path to the Peak, but the draw power is starting to run out here, and now we see the Super Rod getting those Curlia back. Yeah, well, you need to, right? Because without that, with, with the Super Rod combined with the Arten, you can start to set up again. But yeah, it's exactly like you said. The reason why you need those rolls down is so that you can set up, follow, set up you know, following turns after you're doing your early setup and your stuff gets KO'd. So right now, it's very, very important that Runes find this. And also, the Manaphy crucial find there, as that will prevent another opening for Benji to potentially take two prizes with a Radiant Greninja. Yeah, that Radiant Greninja was looking a little bit threatening. Good news is it's been turned off now by that Manaphy, giving that bench protection as it tends to do. But Rune here, I mean, Benjamin hasn't actually done very much this game. He's done a great job setting up his board, don't get me wrong, but he's basically just KO'd three little things with Cramorum. Benjamin hasn't really gone, I'm playing multiple Mirage Gate, I'm attacking with Giratina V-Star. His deck isn't really doing the big thing his deck does. And, you know, the, those cheeky little plays in the first couple of turns have actually got him halfway to winning. And it's all because Rune has not been setting up well enough and that Crammer has been putting in the work. Yeah, exactly. So now Rune, I mean, for Rune to make the ideal comeback this turn, it would be, you know, a return knockout of your know, two prizes, two prizes, two prizes. That's not possible right now. So instead, Rune is forced to psychic embrace to the Gardevoir, retreat again, and go into the Cresselia and, and go for uh, g g moving more of the, the damage across and just trying to make a comeback that way. But it's really not what Rune wants to be doing this turn with that uh, Moonglow Moon reverse. No, it's putting eight damage counters on the Giratina. So again, bringing that second and Giratina V-Star down to 200 when it evolves, just making it much easier to KO without accelerating lots of energy. And Because the problem is, if you start getting the big attacks with Gardevoir, you leave your own Pokemon on very little energy, or, or very little damage yeah. remaining, and that can just lead to easy KOs with stuff like Cramorant and especially Sableye, if the, if the Jirachi goes down. And that just makes it very, very awkward. Okay, there is a very small uh, point here that's worth mentioning. Of course, Cresselia has just a little bit too much HP to be killed by Cramorant. So that's yep. innocently only doing 110 right now. It's not quite enough. So actually, Rune may have just bought himself a turn here. I was assuming Benjamin was going to try and go for someone like a boss's orders, but it was not available. And yeah, that was one of the key points here. Cresselia's got 10 more HP than Cramorant can pull off. So... Yeah, Cramorant finally thwarted. <laughs> Didn't take a prize last term. But again, because you've got stuff like Sableye ready to go in the future, that is a very easy prize to take out if the Jirachi ever leaves the board, which at the moment, of course, it is giving that protection. Yes, so... Retreating now into that shiny Arcana Gardevoir, of course, going to be uh, going to be very, very much like missed pieces of the deck, also with uh, rotation coming up soon. But for now, it's still around, and yeah, it is the sort of really one of the key pieces of making this Gardevoir archetype as strong as it is. But here comes a counter catcher from Rune, yeah, going to be bringing up that Skirting the Beastar, and it's exactly like you said earlier, with the softening up earlier from the Cresselia. Now Rune can take this KO without committing as much energy to the, the Gardevoir, and therefore also not damaging it as much with Psychic Embrace. Yeah, and this is actually the perfect math. So you need five energy on that. 
that guard of to put you up to 210 is how the math works out there so we get a ko here and there is no energy and there's no damage on that guard of and it's out of range of something like a cramorant which is going to force benjamin to come in and actually ko it with something like a giratina which you don't want to do and oh yeah there's no undamaged giratina on benjamin's side of the board so rune still very much on the back foot here but setting up these ko's very very nicely and that is why you soften up the giratina yeah. so i'm sure what benjamin would love to do here is find a way to take out that jirachi then you could just finish the game by doing sableye and KOing the chrysalia and the man of that's a very easy game plan to go for right so gonna be a pokey gear here to see what he's able to find there's a save live of course can't take that but there is a chorus experiment that's good, but we need some kind of gusting, really, ideally. Yeah. Uh, there are two bosses' orders in the deck. I think one's gone already, but I believe there should be a second one unless I've missed it. But it, it's, it's, this is where the game gets super awkward, right? Because Benjamin is on the front foot, but now we've reached that point that Gardevoir wants to be in. The, hey, I've got 140 HP single prize Pokemon with no damage on, and you can't use Sableye. And you've got a damaged Giratina, what, what are you going to do? Yeah. Because if you use your Giratina to KO my Gardevoir, well, you go down to two prizes, but I'm then going to KO your Giratina and go down to two prizes, then we're even. You know, Boss's Orders you just mentioned? Yeah. It's there in the Chorus's experiment. Oh, <laughs> that is unfortunately too late. You cannot play two supporters in one turn, because that would have been the dream here, using Boss's Orders to take out the Jirachi, and then, like you say, Sableye finishes out the game, jobs are good. And not a possibility here, just coming in a little bit too late. And this is really awkward, because if Benjamin doesn't KO that Gardevoir, a boss's orders or a counter catcher for Rune, who is still behind on prizes, will then take out that final Giratina, and at that point, the game's basically over. Yeah, very, very rough here. So Benjamin, we're going to have to think very, very carefully about how to proceed here. And this is why sometimes, because Lost Zone Giratina V Star is often one of those archetypes that does tend to fall back a little bit itself as well. But when you have two decks that do that, you know, fall behind strategy, one of them kind of has to take the lead eventually, right? <laughs> so uh, you're forced into a little bit of an awkward spot. But there is another Giratina V going down there. This one, of course, uh, fully fresh, so won't be able to KO it anywhere near as easily. But can Benjamin even do anything else this turn? No, it's just a pass. It is just a pass, and that is going to be a pretty big deal here. I mean, it's still, it's two or three attacks for Rune. We know you, you can extend and get that Giratina, but it becomes super awkward to actually try and do so. You've got five on there at the moment, so you got was hitting 210. So you can get the Comfey very easily, but you really want to go after that bench. I mean, honestly, the bench Giratina V here would be perfect. That would be the dream. Yeah, because that's the thing with that's the, the bulkiest right now, right? Especially once it evolves. So if you can yeah. just KO it, then... Oh, oh yeah. he's got Counter Catcher! Wait. Oh, that's a huge find! And you can manually attach an energy here from the Fog Crystal, and then you're hitting 240, which is enough to KO the Giratina V. So I believe... And then, of course, there's only one Giratina, and it's heavily damaged and much easier to KO. Yeah. Oh, there might not be any Psychic Energy left in the deck, so it might have to be a Psychic Embrace. But, I mean, it's still fine, It's right? not the... Yeah. 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 I mean, weirdly, <laughs> it will actually bring Gardevoir into Cramorant range, but I think we're at the point where it doesn't actually matter anywhere uh, uh, near as much. Wait, no, we're going to go and get to 120, right? Um, oh, yes, you're right. My yes. Oh, I got so excited about Crammer at there. <laughs> Too exciting, uh, it, it does bring it down to 120, not 110. Okay, fine. My boy Crammer is not going to be getting an easy <laughs> KO. But honestly, at this stage, it is not such a big deal. This is where Rune wants to be. Basically, force your opponent to rely on that last Giratina V-Star which is already heavily damaged. So it should be quite simple. Accelerate an energy, counter catcher on that Giratina. You've only taken two prizes, your opponent's taken three. Counter catcher is on the board. And you've got to think he wants to go after that fresh Giratina there, because then you just KO the damaged one and you win the game. So I think, okay. There's so the damage. There's the damage. No, okay, there's a bit of a future dynamic playing out in my mind here. So hit me out. So. Rune takes his KO here on the Giratina V. Yeah, that makes complete sense. Gonna bring it up. I would be absolutely stunned <laughs> if Rune hadn't done that. Yes, that would have been super weird. Sorry, yeah, I'm interrupting. No, no, it's all good. But, but <laughs> so here's the thing now. Benjamin is in a bit of a pickle because there's several things that he wants to do. He wants to stop Rune from being able to attach more energy by, you know, stopping the Gardevoir. He wants to be able to take a knockout um, ideally on the Gardevoir, but I mean, I think you can't really do that because there's enough energy on the, the, the Gardevoir, not EX, in the active to just take the return KO. So I think what we have to do at this point is find a combination of Roxanne plus Pass to the Peak and then KO the Gardevoir on the active and then just hope your opponent can't find the out. 
Yeah, essentially. It's, I think Path to the Peak is going to be big. Now, Benjamin plays three, and we've seen two. So I believe there should be... Oh, there's one in the loss zone, though. Uh-oh. And I'm sure we've seen two hit the field. Yeah, we absolutely have. So, so I uh... don't think Path to the Peak is on board here. And then if you KO the active, then the EX can just accelerate energy to the other one. And it... So I'm not sure how Benjamin comes back here. Rune does take the KO as expected, goes to two prizes remaining. This is where it's going to get very awkward. I, I think you've laid it down very nicely there, Freya. But I don't think there's a path to the peak. Oh, oh there is a path to the peak in hand. OK, wait, so, but is it three or four? That there's three in the deck. OK. We must, there must only have been one that hit the field. Yeah, yeah, I guess Oh, so. no, because one was lost. One was lost vacuumed. That was it, of course, It was yes. lost vacuumed. It yes. didn't go from a car. It's, it's hard to trap when he's lost zone deck sometimes. <laughs> uh, it really is, but okay. But there we go. So this is this is going to work. So this is the, the play here for Benjamin. Yeah, the only Ga play. Yeah, the only play. So Mirage Gate, Evolve. Is there a Roxanne in hand as well? Yes, there is. So, yeah, Benjamin knows exactly what he's going for here, and he's just going to have to go slam down that Roxanne and pray. Counter catcher as well. Oh, going to bring up the Cresselia, interestingly enough. I don't mind this play. It's 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 everything about it's awkward. I mean, no, no, this actually makes complete sense because you take an easy KO with this, and then you force your opponent to have both something to bring up the Giratina and you know the path counter to win the game. It actually forces your rune to have more outs. So what you're saying is, Cramorant once again is the correct answer. Yes. <laughs> all game, all game. Cramorant has been the correct answer. This I need, need to go and see if I can get Cramorant pin for the next stream. You know, really start repping my boy. I'm on team Cramorant right now. But it is, like you say, it's going to be a very easy prize here. And Krushi leaving a one prizer in the active. Now, Rune plays two counter catcher, one boss's orders, which I believe means it's just boss available. I believe we've seen two counter catcher. But you would need, but you don't, do you even need, how many? No, you don't need a path counter at this stage. Because oh, there's no, enough yeah, energy on, on the guard of yeah. to KO the V star. Yeah, it was why right. it was so important to KO the fresh V last turn. Yeah. So any casting would win the game. But I think it's just one boss's orders. So yeah, there yeah, goes the, the Cresselia. Yeah, because I was going to say, was there any kind of... I, I guess you stop an extra Radiant Greninja draw. Like, it just, you know, it's just like a small... I mean, you may as well play the path, right? Like, there's no reason not to. But, yeah, the energy's already on there, so it is just a matter of drawing the gusting oh, effect. Oh, the top deck for turn was a battle VIP pass, which is not ideal. No. You do still have two cards drawn with a Gardevoir, because that is not a rule box Pokémon, no. so you can still get the... Oh, no, we actually did that twice, of course, because yes. there's two on the board. So, so there's four yeah. cards to be drawn. Yeah, so Ultra Bolt's in the deck. Yeah, get out of Rolt, and it's going to be a matter of two Shining Arcanas. Does Rune find the out to bring up the Giratina V-Star or not? That's all this comes down to. What can we see? In I think there's one boss's orders in deck. I believe... I'm not 100% sure. It is really hard to track what exactly has been <laughs> played and what's in the deck and what's in the prizes while you're trying to cast these games. But I'm sure we've seen two counter catcher from Rune here. So, oh, I, I, so I'm just looking here. You've seen them in a discard pile. Yeah, there's one there at the top, top row and one in the middle row. <laughs> but I believe boss's orders is available. Yeah. So... Oh, well, that's two supporters. It was an INO and a professor's research. That is not going to do it. We've nope. got one more draw of two cards remaining. Meaning. Yeah, Shining Arcana, this, oh, yes, no, maybe. And, oh, actually, the Radiant Ninja also isn't an option unless it gets super back in. That was discarded earlier, so you can't, you, know, you say if you find a path counter, you can't use the Radiant Greninja to draw more cards unless you get it back into the deck somehow. It's always nice to have it down, though, just to block potential plays. Now, it's worth yeah. noting, Benjamin does not have a guaranteed win next turn. He would need gusting of his own. What did we see drawn? Collapse Stadium and a Ultra, Ultra Ball. Ball. It, was not, it wasn't a boss's order, no. so I'll tell you that, Freya. <laughs> no. um, so that's not ideal. And then this just becomes more awkward. Now, this is still anybody's game, because Benjamin does not have the guaranteed win next turn. Benjamin will need some kind of gusting to bring up the Gardevoir. And, yeah, there's 11 cards in the Lost Zone. There's the right energy. So you just V-Star power to KO. Yeah, yeah. Start that's right. an easy KO. So, with that in mind, does Rune collapse here and get rid of the Gardevoir? Yes. yes he does. Yeah. Oh, you beat me to it. I was getting <laughs> to that point. <laughs> <I saw> <laughs> But no, and that was a great play. It basically means Benjamin cannot win the game next turn. It is now impossible for Benjamin to win the game next turn. Rune has basically bought himself one more turn to try and finish out the game. There is a Manaphy to stop any fancy Greninja plays. There is a Jirachi to stop any fancy Sableye plays. And there's no two-prizer on the board.
Yeah, this is a phenomenal position for Rune here. Given that he missed the win this turn, this is the next best thing he could have done. And Benjamin is going to have a really, really hard time trying to piece together. In fact, he can't piece together a win, like you just said. There's no way, right? No, I don't believe it's possible. With both Manaphy and Jirachi on the bench and no two prizes, I don't believe Benjamin can take two prizes this turn. Which then leads to an awkward situation because the Gardevoir, as we've mentioned, is 10 away from being KO'd with Cramorant. So, what do you do? Because this is super awkward at this point. Yeah, Rune has played this very, very cleverly with the energy attachments. You could Sableye. Just on the active, yeah. I guess you, you could, could. Sableye on the active, because remember, Jirachi only protects the bench. And Sableye would drop exactly 12 damage counters, which would exactly KO the Gardevoir. That is the only way to get a KO, as far as I'm aware, with a single prize, is to actually use Sableye next turn. But then, of course, the problem is that's worth one prize, and that's very easy for Rune to KO back to take the last prize and win the game, so it's... Yeah, <laughs> it's not ideal. Um, and that, that's kind of the problem here. But even if you go with Giratina, it's really not that, you know, a reversal energy would win the game for Rune at that point. So, Gosh. yeah. Tricky, tricky, tricky. Super Odd shuffles in. Uh, I think that was a Curlia and a Guard of Oryx. So those are going to go back in. But there are no more options to draw cards this turn. So it's going to be uh, well, those reversal energies in Rune's hand aren't going to do much of anything right now. But I guess you could attach one for just, like, the colourless aspect of it. I nah, you just wait. Um, or just attach it so it's on board for next turn. Because yeah. this, this KO is a Giratina now. This now gets a KO on a Giratina. So if a Giratina comes up and takes a KO, either of those Gardevoir just get the return KO super easily. But, but, but the Rune, oh, no, no, they'll, they'll be even on prizes. They will be even on prizes, yeah. 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 Oh, no, no. I was so excited then. Forgot Rune was taking a prize. Yeah. No, but at the same time, what you can do is just take a Brainwave KO on Sableye. You mentioned you're putting Sableye in the active and then just uh, putting 12 on the Gardevoir, but then the other Gardevoir can come in and just do Brainwave for what it will be... 120. Yeah, 120, yeah, so that'll be, that'll be enough. Or on a Cramorant. Or on a Comfey. Yep. So it, it, it makes it a valid attacker, but you're right, I got too excited about the reversal energy there. But it does make it a valid attacker, which will get a KO on anything but the Giratina. Yeah. So this is this is a very back and forth game. Both players are really trying hard to elongate. You know, with 20 minutes left in this best of three, and we haven't yet <laughs> seen a, an end to this first game. This is this is really coming down to the wire. Benjamin, I mean, you've got to KO the active Gardevoir. You've got to. Yeah, yeah, you have to. And oh, doesn't Avery as well drawing? Oh, Benjamin drawing the last cards of his deck. Does he have a super? Yeah, yeah, he must do. Yeah, there it is. Because otherwise you just lose, right? So anyway, <laughs> that would be a less than ideal way to end the game. Uh, Avery, of course, draw three cards, and then your opponent has to go down to free bench. Oh, this actually is very clever because now that forces a uh, room to discard the Jirachi. Because if you discard the Rolts, that means there's no way to get a Guard X next turn. Yep, and then that does open. But, it, but even then, um, Sableye's not winning the game this time. Oh, yeah, no, that's true. Yeah, there's, no, there's not enough damage already on the field to make a difference. So, yeah, I guess Rune recognizing that and thinking, yeah, I don't need the Drachi anymore anyway. No. Now, whereas had you got rid of the Manaphy, Greninja would have been able to KO the Rouse and the Jirachi and win the game. So, yeah, getting rid of the Jirachi there was the play. Sableye, if it could drop 14 damage counters, <laughs> but it can't. That's not the world we live in. So, uh, yes, Jet Energy now coming in. Is it going to be, I guess, I guess uh, uh, Benji's thinking here, let's make it as hard as possible for Rune to take this KO. So, and it's going to be V-Star Power, so Star Requiem to KO the Gardevoir. And now it's up to Rune. Can you find the last pieces to get all this energy on the it's Gardevoir? energy straight away. Oh, Boss's well, orders, and that's all you need. Rune takes game one with the KO on. Something on the bench. It doesn't really <laughs> matter what it was. Yeah. And after all of that, Benjamin playing so well. Rune just had the Boss's orders in hand anyway. Yeah, yeah. it's funny he attached the Psych Genji as well, but he didn't even need that, right? He had the attack powered up, but like you could just... You, do 90 damage would be enough to KO anything, but yeah, Rune taking game one there after it was, that was a phenomenal game. That was a real, that was a hard game to track <laughs> yeah, yes, because was. that was a very, there was a lot of back and forth, lots of well, he can do this, but then he can do this, and then this play's available, but now this play's been blocked off. But if this card gets drawn, then this can be done. And both players had outs throughout that game. There were turns where one card was missed, and that could have been the difference in the game. And the problem is, if you're Benji now, you go into game two thinking, I thought I had that. 
Yeah, yeah. But, but of course, that's what you want to see, right? That's uh, These are kind of my favorite games to cast, where there is back and forth, and there is actually, like you said, oh, this could happen, oh, this could happen. It just, it is hard to keep track, but it makes things more fun for us, I think. I mean, as a caster, that game was great. As a Benjamin, that game was <laughs> not so great. No, Because you've now got less than 20 minutes remaining, and realistically, the chances of actually winning this round are extremely slim. Yeah, and especially considering, like, you had a really good lead right at the beginning. I, mean, I know Gardevoir is, like, the come the comeback deck, but you, we were pretty convinced that Benjamin in, in, was in a position where he could close things out fairly easily, but no, Rune completely turned it around, made all the correct plays to make that happen, and just, yeah, absolutely phenomenal stuff. I'm just saying there were some cheeky plays in that game. <laughs> the, collapse, again. the Collapse Stadium getting rid of the Gardevoir EX was, was a personal favorite of mine. Getting that turn to Mirage Step was fantastic. And look, Rune had was really against the wall there. Even after the Mirage Step, we saw a couple of turns in with the early Cramorant running rampant, Missing those two routes was big. Even post Mirage Step, missing those two routes was a very, very big deal because it was hard to recover your board. Mirage Step is best when you can get your Curlier out and then weave in a couple of routes so as soon as the Curlier or the Guard of Wild start going down, you're recovering super quickly. That was not working. Yeah, but let's make no mistake. Were it not for Mirage Step Curlier, Rune was not winning that game. Oh, like, no. That, that was, that, that was you know, were it not for that you know, option, he wouldn't have been able to even set up at all. So it was very, very important and good for him that that's, uh, it was not in the prizes alongside those two roles. I feel extremely confident that had Mirage Step Curlier not been in the deck list, we would have been on to game two in about five minutes. That Crammer would have just ended did the game super quickly. But here, if you're Rune, you're feeling good. Because the other thing about Gardevoir is, even when you lose, you don't tend to lose that quickly. You tend to be able to build up lots of Pokemon, have 140 HP single prizes, you know, take some prizes here or there, frustrate your opponent. You tend to lose longer games. Benjamin here is basically going to be hoping for, similar to last game, but like without something like Mirage Step, where it's just Crammer and Crammer and Crammer, let's go to game three. I mean, let's be honest, what Benjamin is really, really hoping for is Rune to you know, just start with a lone Pokemon and get Crammer at KO. Yeah, that's what Benjamin <laughs> really wants. He so, wants to be Christian Fontenot again, just like getting the lone KO on a turn one basic. I mean, we've seen it. We've seen it happen many times. Oh, oh. that's too many Giratina in the prize cards. Oh, don't bench. Oh, no, oh wait. Uh, uh, okay. no, but that's, yeah, that's One of each is fine. Yeah. I thought we were going to have two routes prized again. But is that two Giratina V and a V star? It sure is, which is, again, it's not unworkable. That's not great by any stretch of the imagination. There's three Giratina V in the deck list, so that means one is available for the game. Well, I mean, he started it, so... <laughs> But it's the only one. <laughs> the good news for Benjamin is God of War is not a deck that is going to be punishing that super early. No. God of War's not taking a turn two KO on a Giratina unless something super weird happens. I mean, you say that. I have a very distinct memory of uh, playing, I was playing Lugia at a tournament, and uh, I had one Lugia V down, I was playing against God of War, and they got a turn two Boss's Orders KO on my lone Lugia playing God of War. I was not very happy. <laughs> Would you describe that as something super weird happening? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> because then I'm still right. <laughs> so Benjamin had a very fast turn one. You've got Giratina V. You've got your Radiant Greninja. You've got your Comfey. One card in the Lost Zone. And it's going over to Rune, who's kind of copying the homework a little bit there. And you've got the, Gira uh, the Greninja, sorry, using concealed cards. Now, I was a little bit worried for a second there. It looked like Rune didn't have like an out to search for another Ralts, but did find that other ball. So can grab another Ralts now. And uh, yeah, probably going to be quite a bit happier about the way the prizing has gone this game. Yeah, it does play. I need to point this out. Rune does play for Battle VIP Pass. So this isn't some weird version of the deck where you're trying to hit that Mirage Step Curlier. Rune is playing for Battle VIP Pass, same as Benjamin is, just, just, just not drawing it. Yeah, yeah, just uh, hasn't seen him. And that's, uh, that is the thing with Battle VIP Pass, right? It is one of those very... Um, I'm trying to find like, the right word for it. Like... Um, Sort of make or break cards because it's you don't always see it turn one when you do it's so powerful and that's why it's worth playing but then if you don't see it turn one and then you have these cards in your deck doing nothing doesn't feel good i like to use big words and say potentially inequitable thank you because some players <laughs> will hit it and some players won't and it feels really bad like you, we've all had those games where your opponent hits double battle vip past turn one and then it comes over to you and you are playing four and you don't hit any of them and all of a sudden especially in a mirror match your opponent is so much better set up than you and yeah the good news is we've got double routes but it looks like we're going for another morale step game yeah i was gonna say potentially next to all that's the business teacher coming out isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah it is sometimes i like to use big words because then people might think i'm clever so love of all for the rolts 
and yeah, attached to the active. Will we see a teleportation burst? Yeah, I guess why not, right? You just go into the go into the Greninja, just to force Benjamin to work a little bit harder to KO Rolt, so you have two surviving, and more than likely that Radiant Greninja is going to survive because, of course, Cramorant only does 110. Radiant Greninja has 130 HP. Cramorant cannot deal with Radiant Greninja. No, you got the double edge there of on the one hand you're protecting your routes, and on the other hand you're putting something active which can take a hit from a Cramorant. So very nicely played there. And again, like R Rune wants to win this game. Let's be perfectly clear. But this is one more turn where Benjamin's probably not taking a prize. We got 12 minutes left in this game, and Rune doesn't need to win this game. Rune just needs to not lose. So get yourself set up, get your Gardevoir going, take a few prizes, and hopefully you win the game. But it's not quite so desperate. Whereas with Benjamin here, we already saw it in game one. Benjamin is going to play fast. So, okay. It's, a sh it's not possible, so it's a real shame, but there was a potential opening there if Benjamin drew insanely well to go for four flower selectings charge up the Radiant Greninja and then KO both the Rolts. It, it, it didn't happen, but if that's the case, I think we would be moving on to a game three very quickly. I mean, that is the kind of thing that Benjamin really needs in this game. Very unlikely would have been amazing. Instead, we see a Giratina come active and use Abyss Seeking. Look at the top four cards of your deck. Two go to your hand, two go to the Lost Zone. And we've actually got seven in the Lost Zone already from Benjamin here, so Mirage Gate is on board. Yeah, that's, this is one of the phenomenal things about you know, Giratina is that People look really come to realize how strong, especially with jet energy, the abyss seeking attack is in the early game. Because especially against a deck like Gardevoir, like you already mentioned, in the early turns, you're not really feeling that threatened. It's very unlikely that they can put out a strong attacking presence that can KO something like a Giratina. So you're completely safe to go into the active, use abyss seeking, and set yourself up in the lost zone really nicely to get your Mirage Gates and your, your Lost Mines going. And let's not forget, you know, Rune did soften up Giratina last game and it did work beautifully, just not in that position. Now, the great news for Rune is that a man if he hit the ball we saw no curly of that game this with with seven cards in the lost zone this would have been a perfect term for radiant greninja to go and ko both of those routes and it would have been far less awkward than last term but that man if he coming down unfortunately has ruined everything and that's exactly why rune put it down right he realized okay hold on seven in the lost zone if i don't put a man if he down here and i also can't evolve my roles i'm in big big trouble so let's just protect myself so at least one of my roles survives into next turn it's the way to go. Now, we do see Sableye being searched out. Of course, remember, you need 10 cards in the Lost Zone for Sableye to become active. And those routes have 70 HP, so you can KO one and then drop five damage counters on the other. You cannot get them both. Of course, you could also target down the Manaphy if you so wished, but we're not there yet. We need three more cards in the Lost Zone. So... Benjamin's played an escape rope there. Rune opted to send up the Rolts there, again thinking, you know what, I'm acknowledging that I'm okay with you know, one Rolts going down. I would rather have that than for my Manaphy to go down to enable a potentially really scary Radiant Greninja play later. And we kind of need a Cramorant here because against small single prize Pokemon, Giratina is woefully inefficient. Like, you can either use your V-Star power or attach free energy in Lost Zone 2 of them to get a KO. Like, Giratina V-Star is a terrible attacker into something like a Routes. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you can use Shred, of course, which is, like, if you don't evolve the Giratina V, then that, that does usually work okay. Just does 160 damage and, of course, punches through any effects on the defending Pokemon. But it is also not... You don't want to leave your one Giratina vulnerable, right? So that is, that is an attacking option, but with Benjamin, we see the Cramorant's in hand, so yeah. I think it's going to go for that. I, I mean, with 60 less HP than the V-Star, the idea of leaving your only Giratina active and not as a V-Star is legitimately terrifying to me. So we do see the KO with the Cramorant grabbing a Roxanne off the prizes with a path to the peak in play oh. for about 10 seconds. And uh, here's an important card to note, of course, a Moonlit Hill, one of the new cards from Paldean Fates. One of the, one that I say, like the few cards that we really expect to be impactful on the metagame uh, from the new set. And uh, with, that, uh, with that, of course, you can discard a, a basic Psychic Engine from your hand uh, once per turn to heal 30 damage from each of your Pokemon. A phenomenal card in Gardevoir. Yeah, it's one we've been waiting for for a while. There's been a big question of which set are we finally going to get Moonlit Hill in? Oh, and oh, it Rune just concedes. Oh, my word. Now, we did have nine minutes left. But, yeah, Rune, I mean, no, there was no Curlier there. No, no. Absolutely. Rune was not drawing well enough. And you see the smile from Benjamin there. <laughs> he knows that he has gotten away with one a little bit here. Because if you lose game one to Gardevoir and there's 20 minutes remaining, you usually think this could be a 1-0 victory for my opponent. Taking game two in 10 minutes flat, that is a great one. And look, 
you know, five minutes ago, Benjamin thought this was almost certainly a lost round. And if you go from a loss to a tie, oh, that's a good feeling. Yeah, you definitely, you definitely take that. So uh, a little bit unfortunate there for Rune, not able to find anything to really set up with and just stuck with some uh, rolls and just thinking, you know what? Prolonging this is, it doesn't really make much sense. Maybe I can win a crit game free. I might as well just concede here and take that chance. You don't want to tie round four. It's as simple as that. We all know ties happen, right? But the thing is, if you, if you take a tie in rounds like seven, eight, nine, fine. That's acceptable, especially if it gets you into day two. But these players, with, with the massive day twos we have nowadays, nobody wants to actually scrape into day two with 19 match points. No. <laughs> you want to go in with 21, 22, 23. You want as many as possible. And taking a tie in round four, it just feels a bit sometimes like that's ah, too early. So let's try and go and get the win. So what do we see in prizes? That's... Radiant Greninja? Yeah, there's a way less awkward there from Benji's side. Oh, do you think that the Jirachi price for Rune that could come in to a spot of bother later? But, oh, there we see Rune starts off game three, finally opens with that Battle VIP pass. And now you all at home know I wasn't lying to you. Rune does <laughs> actually play Battle VIP pass. And straight away, we get that Manaphy and that Ralts hitting the bench there, starting to set up. There's one Curly a prize, but look, you're playing a lot of Gardevoir pieces. There's going to be one or two prize like every game. Yeah. To be fair, we, we did see room refinement away battle VIP passes earlier on, so we, we, I think we, we already have proof that we weren't lying, but yeah. And we do see just a little bit of a, a check here, just trying to figure out what's prized and what's not. And whereas in the last game, we saw Benjamin playing fast, trying to make sure this game two could end in his favor. Here, we might see both players playing fast. I mean, if you're Rune and you're conceding that last game, it's because you're going, you know what? I think I can maybe, maybe I can pull out a game three if everything goes in my way. Yeah, absolutely. And... Uh... With uh, and Rune there saying, even after going through the VIP pass, saying, you know what, you can just go ahead and take your turn after as I check my prizes. I want to make sure that this game finishes. Yeah, and I'm sure Benjamin is not going to be terribly upset. Both of these players know a tie is not the end of the world, but it is too early in the tournament to really start taking ties. Because the other thing is, you know, the late in theory, the later you get in the tournament, if you're having a good day, you know, we're playing Swiss rounds here. You play against people with the same record as you. So the later the tournament gets, the better players you're playing against. Although, to be fair, both of these have got <laughs> well, a yeah. pretty rough round four draw. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> but you want to be trying to stack wins as early as you can because it gets it gets harder as the game goes on if you're having a good day. Yeah. So, Flash Lightning number one finds, oh, a Sableye and a Psychic Energy. Now, I do believe Benjamin only plays the one Sableye, right? That's usually the, that the is common, correct. That is the common count now, nowadays in Garyteen. So, yeah, we're going to want to keep that option for later. Does opt to loss zone the Psychic Energy. And now, is there a switching card in hand to go for the other Flash Lightning? Yeah, it looks like there is. But uh, Benjamin's hand doesn't look that great, honestly. Yeah, if, if you end the turn with two Comfey, this is where Rune kind of goes, OK, this is what I wanted. But Battle VIP pass and Poker Gear? Oh, that's very rough because, like, look at your hand currently. You don't have access to a supporter, so but you need also to, you know, Pokemon set up with. So looks like it did opt for the Battle VIP pass in the end, just prioritizing that Pokemon setup. But really needs to find something else, maybe off of a third Flask, letting off of a third Comfey. Or, uh, of course, it would have gone for the Radiant Greninja, but we know that that's prized. It's kind of awkward, because on the one hand, yeah, you're lost zoning a really good card. That's rubbish. On the other hand, would you rather have that or, you know, two basic energy that are just not going to help you out of this bind in which you find yourself? Yeah, so opting for the Battle VIP pass there does grab a Giratina V and a Cramorant. Has a, a Nest Ball as well, but with no access to Chorus's experiment, it's going to be a little bit tough to find a way to attack that Cramorant this turn. And uh, like, like I already mentioned, with no way to draw more cards with the Radiant Greninja being prized, a uh, bit of a tough turn there for Benjamin. Yeah, you do get the double Giratina V out, which is lovely. There, there is our old friend Cramorant, who is sitting there quite nicely. But it doesn't look like we're going to see that early KO on a route that Benjamin loves to do so much. And I know that because every Lost Zone player loves to do that. We just see a pass back, and that was that was kind of it for Benjamin. That was that was a turn where you KO a route and go, I am taking a prize every single turn. You would better set up quickly or I'm winning this game. But you're setting up quickly. Ultra Ball goes for the Mirage Step Curly and just announces Mirage Step with no hesitation. Yeah, Rune really wants to win this game, and I love that. I love seeing players go, no, I don't want a tie. Let's finish this out. Let's try and get that win. It does seem like that is unfortunately where we're headed. But if we can see a couple of quick turns here, a couple of quick KOs, things can change. Both players basically get two turns when time is called. We finish the active turn and then have three extra. So if you can just take a prize or two before 
before turn is uh, before time is called, you might have enough turns to finish it out. Yep. So there is uh, not even looking at the second card before Lost in the Battle VIP pass off that fast selecting. Very understandably, of course, has that jet energy to do so. Gonna just then retreat and has enough now in the Lost Zone with the Cramorant to take a KO. Yeah, and this is very, very good. Of course, it's going to be much more awkward for Benjamin here because Rune can really control the two. Like, it's only really the Zashian, which is not getting played unless you're desperate. It's already been discarded. There we go. <laughs> or the Gardevoir, which is, you know, it's only the one. Whereas Benjamin kind of has to have a couple of Giratina out to try and finish out this game. So the ideal situation for Rune here, and it's not an easy one, but here's what we're looking for. Quick prize this turn, quick prize next turn, don't be turn zero. Yes, absolutely. If you can if you can do that, then you have the means to you know, maybe carry two two prizes and win the game, but you've got to be lightning fast. And I don't know, look at this, I'm a little bit worried that Rune's not going to quite be fast enough. And it, it's an issue, right? Because you don't want to be like so fast that you end up you misplaying and not being able to <laughs> set yourself up. But you need to play fast. Like, what do you do? I mean, honestly, in a situation like this, it really depends where, where your mindset's at. If you really desperately don't want to tie, there's your counter catcher onto a Giratina. If you really don't mind, if you really don't want to tie, you play fast and risk making a mistake. If you want to win, but a tie will be okay, then you speed up a little bit, but you don't go silly. You make sure that you're playing a bit more carefully. Now, it does look like we've got the Giratina in the active. We have got a Guard of Wari X on the bench into which Rune has evolved a Ralts. Oh, Ultraport's got in two Psyche Energy as well. That's really strong. Is this... And then... Actually, wait. Does Rune have it? With, with that, I think that might actually be enough Psyche Energy in discard. Maybe it depends on what Rune hits off of this uh, of, of the Shining Arcano. Well, we're looking for five energy. That's what we need. Five energy is what we're looking for. That is the number, but it looks like it's a Cresselia instead. So that's just going to... That's and only... So Shining Arcana... Didn't find any engine. Okay, so uh, just going to soften up the Giratina. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Soften up the Giratina, get that done. And... Yeah. But, oh, but that's a bit tough, though, because, like you mentioned, you really wanted to take a prize there, right, so that you can be uh, going to turn zero with enough turns left to win, but I don't think that's going to happen anymore. Unfortunately, it is not. So we see an energy going on to Giratina. I mean, Benjamin here, realistically, Benjamin is just not going to have enough turns. No. It's just not going to happen. There's only one two prizes on Rune's side of the board. And if time gets called, Rune is just going to be like, I'm not playing any more two prizes. You literally cannot take enough prizes to win. No. 40 seconds left on the clock. Rune playing as fast as he can, doing his best, but it's just probably not going to quite be enough. There's a Shining Arcana. Does get another energy onto the Gardevoir there. But uh, yeah, I, I just, in 30 seconds, Ross, I don't know about you. I, I just don't, I don't think I see it. Rune could take a KO this turn on the Giratina, that's fine, but it means that all Benjamin has to do to guarantee not losing the game is don't play another two prize Pokemon. Yes. And yeah, then you're exactly. good. Yeah. You'll be like, well, you know what, Rune, you've got two more turns, but there's only one two prize Pokemon, so you can only take three prizes. Yeah. Wait, was that? There's, oh, okay, wait, is there six energy on the Gardevoir? Yeah, yeah, there is. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, well, one of us a little bit hidden, I got a bit confused. <laughs> yeah, no, we've got six energy on the Gardevoir. We are good. And... Yeah, I think I think we're doing all right, frankly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Time has now been called. We have had the confirmation. And yeah, both players packing it up. There is no possible way that either player can actually win this game. So we are going to be ending in a tie. Yeah. Well, it was exactly on cue as we got the confirmation time was called. They both dropped their cards and recognized, yeah, nope, not happening. It's uh, yeah, unfortunate, but yeah, sometimes these things happen in Pokemon. And even so, you know, starting on the uh, three wins and one tie, it's still a very solid start to the day. Yeah, oh yeah, I mean, 3 one is a great start, let's be clear. And I, I don't want to downplay a 3 0 one start. Three wins, one tie in the first four rounds. Most players would love that. There are literally hundreds of players in the room, and we got enough players, I can say this, of absolute confidence, that would love to be sitting at 3 0 one right now. Absolutely, it would. But, uh, you know, especially, I mean, for both players there, Benjamin had such a good start in game one. He thought he was going to win that game. And then Rune won game one and went, right, well, I've won game one. There's only 20 minutes left. I'm playing Gardevoir. I've done this before. I'm going to win the match. For both of those players to then end up with a tie, both of them are going to be walking away from the table this round and going, I should have won that. Yeah.
But I mean, but, but I mean, what can you do, right? But that's how the game plays out. You can say, oh, I should have won that as much as I'd like. But, <laughs> but that's actually, but I mean, so I joke a bit about it, but that's actually a very important point to make, right? When you come up against a situation like this and you have like a win that was like just right in your reach, but it didn't quite make it there, you have to shake it off. You can't let it, you know, throw you off too much because if you're going into the next game thinking, oh, I should have won that last round, I should have won the last round, that you are setting yourself up for like a really, really bad mindset and then you're going to make more mistakes and then you're going to tumble down the rankings and before you know it, your tournament's ended in disaster. Yeah, the good news is we got two very experienced players. You know, we said that Ruin only aged up recently into Masters, but all that experience in seniors putting him in very, very good stead to, you know, shake this off. And look, 301 is great. They've still got the inside track to making it into day two. It's just, it, it's very rare that we see a game like that where game one really honestly could have been either player. And it really did come down. We've actually had two very close games on stream because, of no, course, you know, back in game one, of the first round we streamed, there was that one game, there was that one turn where Raul was forced to roar the sword, leave that Zash in there, and had his opponent got a gusting card on that one turn, that would have ended the game and given us a very different match between Roaring Moon and Gardevoir. So we got some tight action on stream so far. Yeah, we sure do. But again, right, you have to draw the out. If you miss, you miss. That's the nature of the game. So like players like Rahul, players uh, yeah, like Benji and uh, Rune, they all shake it off. And I mean, uh, Rahul won't need to shake it off. Obviously, he won. But in the instance of uh, Benjamin and Rune, they're going to shake it off. They're going to recognize, you know what? I did all I could there. 